Hello, Abutis from around the world. My name is Kaisa and I'm 13 years old and I live in Boston, Massachusetts. Welcome to our Abut Zoom session where me and my friends, Anya and Kansa, are dialing in respectively from Cambridge, Massachusetts and the UAE to interview Francisco Hernandez Caceres, a three-time Emmy-winning TV journalist and producer. This session won't be a typical Abut interview. It is more of a training. We are not only here to learn about Francisco's background, journey, work, skills, and impact, but also about the art of interviewing. We are really excited. We hope that you enjoyed the session, and I will now start with our first question to our guest. Francisco, I just made a short introduction to the session. If you were the one doing it, how would you go about it? Ooh, interesting. I love that. Um, I would probably do the same thing you did. I think you did a great job, Kais. Uh, I would just say, Hey everyone, I'm Francisco and I'm very excited to welcome you to this ABUT training where we're going to be talking to um, a journalist that's going to give you some training about how to do interviews and we're connecting all around the world with Kenza and Anya and Kai to talk about this. I hope you enjoy it. How does that sound? Sounds good. <laughs> What were your favorite subjects in school and why did you like them so much? I loved math, which is interesting because in my job, I, I haven't necessarily done a lot of math, but I was even a mathlete and I competed in, in, in some tournaments back in my home country in El Salvador. And I think I also loved literature. I loved reading and um, social studies. Those are probably my favorite subjects. Who inspires you? Right now, what inspires me, I think I'm studying an, a master's at the Harvard Kennedy School, and I feel inspired every day by, by all of my classmates to see so many people that are dedicating their lives to make the world a better place. It's it empowers me to try to do the same. So I think right now I'm in a very inspired place. Why did you want to do Harvard this year? Well, I was doing, uh, I've been working on television for the past 17 years and mostly doing film journalism. So my job was to interview actors and directors and to go to uh, movie sets to see how movies were being made. And, and it was a beautiful thing and I loved it. But I think that for the past five years or so, I felt that I needed to do a little transition to change the course of my career and to try to do something where I could help the world. And I felt like the Kennedy School was going to give me the tools to be able to do that. And so I came here with the idea that I was going to learn about politics and then do journalism. And right now, I'm not sure that I want to do political journalism, but I am excited to figure out what the next phase is, where I know that I'm going to combine television with public good. Has anyone you have worked with been uncooperative? <laughs> oh, we're getting to the, the tough questions. I love it, Anya. Uh, yes, I think that throughout my career, there's always a lot of people that are very nice to work with. And then you meet sometimes people that are difficult to work with. I think that those experiences have helped me to understand how to to find the, the common ground with other people. So. As difficult as it has been, I think it's taught me a lot. But yes, I've had experiences, for instance, when I interview people and then all they do is answer with yes or no questions. So imagine if right now you were asking me questions and I would just be like, yes, no, math, literature, then there's, it's not a conversation. But, and this is where we might be going into the training a little bit, that's, um, it's an interesting challenge to try to make these people that give you short answers talk a little bit more. 
What skills do you need to be a good interviewer? Hmm. First and foremost, curiosity. I think that you have to be curious about the world and about what the people that you are talking to. And then listening. I think that that's probably one of the biggest lessons I, I learned. Because at the beginning, you're always thinking about the questions that you have in front of you. And so as the person is talking, you are already thinking about what you're going to ask next. And sometimes when the person is giving you an answer, there are some things that you can then ask another question regarding that answer and make it even more interesting. So I think curiosity and listening would be the top two skills that you need uh, as an interviewer. Okay. Um, what would you say is the hardest thing about interviewing? Well, there's many things <laughs> that are hard. From the beginning, I think getting the interviews, it's hard. I am, when you want to interview high profile people, like I interviewed Vice President Kamala Harris. It's hard. It's, it's, you have to do a lot of work. You have to make a lot of phone calls, send a lot of emails. Even when you're interviewing actors like George Clooney or Angelina Jolie, it requires a lot of work even before the interview, just getting them to accept that interview. And then research and preparation, trying to understand who are you talking to? What are you going to ask? Um, once you're in, in, in the interview, I think sometimes you have to manage your nerves when you are talking to someone that has such a high profile job and especially when you want to ask difficult questions you want to do it in a respectful manner you don't want to offend the other person so i would say those are things to keep in mind whenever you do an interview How do you make like the uncooperative people cooperative with you? Like you said something about common ground. Could you please elaborate on that? Yes, I think that trying to find the things that you share with the other person, trying to build a relationship, that helps a lot. Because sometimes what we do is we go to an interview and you start directly asking the questions and I think just even asking the other person how they're doing, how their day is going and, and establishing that human connection so that they know that uh, this is just a conversation that you're having between two um, humans. I think that helps a lot. And then you can go on and ask all of the easy and difficult questions that you have. What do you most like about your job? There are many things that I like about my job. I think I love the fact that I am able to witness important events in history and I am there firsthand and I'm a part of them. And I'm able to talk to the people that are making those that are making history I think that's probably one of the biggest things. And then to, to be able to travel around the world and to experience different cultures and to learn more. And I'm a curious person, so, and I love asking questions. So this is like the, the perfect job for me because then I get paid to travel and ask questions and talk to people that I find interesting. That's great. Okay, earlier you mentioned that you interviewed like Kamala Harris and other people, like important people like that. Could you name three famous people that you enjoyed interviewing and why? Mm. I enjoyed interviewing Dr. Fauci, especially because this was right at the beginning of the pandemic. And I appreciated the fact that he was the voice that, of, of, that was helping us understand what was going on and to be able to ask direct questions to him and even difficult questions about how 
the administration at the time was handling the pandemic and his openness to just answer anything that was great i i have a bias because i love sandra bullock and so every time that i've interviewed her she's been so nice and sweet and it's been funny i've always felt that it's like a conversation with a friend and then it's always nice to interview Dwayne the Rock Johnson who's also incredibly polite and willing to play games and to have fun i would say those are the three that come to mind right now How and don't get me wrong i love the interviewing VP Harris. It's just that I mentioned her already. That was historic and I appreciate her being the first uh black Indian woman vice president. So, I that's obviously a very it has a very important place in my heart as well. How do you prepare for an interview and how much of the technical aspects do you need to know? In terms of the technical aspects, do you mean the like the camera or lighting or what kind of technical aspects Yeah like the camera the lighting like where you have to like sit for better lighting like stuff like that Got it I prepare a lot <laughs> I think I it depends on the person it depends on the type of interview if you're doing an interview with a vice president or a, a, an elected official I, i remember that i interviewed alexandria ocasio cortez and i would just go very deep in trying to understand their policies or or their interests what they've done their history then there's other interviews that might be a little simpler let's say if you're doing an interview for a movie you watch the movie you read about the production you read about the the actor so it varies but i would say i would try to i try to do as much research as possible and in terms of the technical aspects because i'm also a producer i get very involved in 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 everything on how it's going to look where the lights are going to be where we're going to be seating i i always take care of how the shot is going to look because especially working in television you might have an amazing conversation with someone but if it looks bad then people are not going to pay attention. So I think those technical aspects, I always for instance, I always wanted at least three cameras so that we could have a shot of the person that I was interviewing, a shot of myself and then the two of us together. I would want us to be perfectly lit. I would always take care that the background was interesting so that it was just not um something boring in the back. So I would get very involved in all of those technical aspects. Yes. How much have you improved from your first time and now? Millions or <laughs> I I don't even know how to tell you. I look back at those first interviews and I have improved so much. I think practice makes perfect and it's just I think being in front of a camera it takes some time to to get used to it and relax and understand that i think that for the longest time i was trying to be perfect when i was doing an interview and sometimes when you're trying to be so perfect it can become a little stoic or unnatural so i learned through time that being myself and even if i mispronounce a word even if i don't say something right that's me that's who i am and that usually when i am being 100% myself is when i'm doing the best work so it took a little while but i feel like i i got there <laughs> okay talking about like improvement how do you think that we could improve like a voice interviews I think you're doing a great job by the, the most interviews you do the more comfortable you're going to be so i would say do this as much as you can and then watch yourselves and 
and see how you performed in an interview. And because I think that when sometimes I remember that I would do interviews and afterwards I would feel like, oh my God, that was, that was so bad. And then I would watch it and see, ha, huh, it was not bad. So what I'm trying to say is that while you're in an interview, sometimes you're nervous and you, and you don't realize how it looks. So rewatching it is going to help a lot. And then you're going to see, oh, maybe I should have smiled more. Maybe I shouldn't have smiled as much. Maybe I should have, um, even the way that you sit sometimes, I remember that like, maybe you don't realize and you're like this and then you know, oh no, maybe I should sit a little like better. So just watching it is going to help. And then I also think that talking to people that you trust, for instance, your parents and, and say, and asking them, Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this question? I'm sure that these people that love you are going to give you very good feedback. How do you think social media has impacted the journalism world? Oof, how much time do we have? <laughs> I think it's impacted a lot and uh, in good ways and then in not so good ways. The fact that now we can see events that are happening all over the world in real time by people like, because today, Everyone can be a journalist. And so if there's a, a war, if there is any type of situation, for instance, even the murder of George Floyd here in the United States, there was a person that took their phone out and then recorded it. And, and, and we were able to witness what was happening because of that person that became a journalist then. So those are things that are great because it's helping us see the world and uncover things that perhaps we wouldn't know. On the other hand, I think that social media, because everyone can be a journalist, now everyone can think that they're an expert. And so you have a lot of disinformation and, and social media has promoted a lot of um, facts that are not real to then be spread around the world. So yes, I think it's impacted a lot, both in good ways and not good ways, unfortunately. If someone is struggling to interview a person, um, how would you advise them to be like a bit better? If someone is struggling to interview a person, you mean like in the moment if they're having trouble yeah. I think sometimes we go to interviews and we we need to come prepared with a plan. But then once you're in an interview, you have to be able to um, adapt. And so perhaps you have all of these great questions and then the person is just not necessarily giving you what you want. And by listening, I think that maybe there's times where you have to just go with the flow and and go where the person wants you to go. It's, it's like a balancing act of, yes, okay, so I understand that you want to talk about this, so let's talk about this for a moment because you're passionate about this. And then once we have that connection and you're comfortable talking, then maybe I can ask all the other things that I need talk about so plan 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 but then also be flexible once you're in the interview and also have fun I think it's at the end of the day it, it's really cool to talk to people and and try to enjoy it as much as you can I think that helps a lot as well when you were a kid did you already know that like you wanted to become a journalist or interviewer I knew that I wanted to work on television. I didn't know how or where, but I was enamored by, by TV and I would watch TV and movies all the time. So my dream was always to work in something TV related. And I think that life took me on the journalism path. Um, 
but yes, ever since I was little, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. How long did it take for you to get comfortable in front of the camera? <laughs> um, that's a great question, actually. I would say probably a couple of years. I, I was comfortable enough to put myself out there, but I would be a little nervous and you still get a little like butterflies sometimes, especially when you're doing an important interview or you're co like, if you're going to the Oscars or going to an important movie premiere or something like that, it's, it's always a little nerve wracking, but I think that now after a few years, I was able to use that energy and then channel it to do a better job while doing it. But I would say probably a couple of years. What did you study to be prepared to do your work? I, so I went to, I have an undergrad in communications and journalism. So I went to college for that. And then I have a master's degree in filmmaking uh, because when I was doing film reporting, I felt like I really needed to understand how movies are made so that I could do my job of interviewing actors and directors and producers. And that's why I went to film school. And it helped me understand also the, all of the production and technical aspects that Anya was asking about. I think that was very helpful. And then I came to the Kennedy School with the idea of understanding how politics work, work and, and, and how the, the American government worked. So I would say that it's, it's, it's a twofold, let's say it's two parts. One is uh, understanding how to be a journalist, understanding how to work on television or, or, or whichever medium you want to work on. And the other one is trying to become an expert in the subject matter that you want to focus on so that you can ask these questions that are that are interesting and, and, and exciting. All right, so this is going to be our last question about the interview slash training. Um, could you summarize your key tips in one short message so we can share it with Obutis who will be conducting upcoming interviews? Could I summarize my what? Sorry, your key tips like for interviews. Ah, okay. And this is for a message for the Obuders. Am I pronouncing that right? Yes, Obuders. Yeah. Okay, okay. Obooters, I am so excited that you want to do interviews. I think you're doing an amazing job. Throughout the years, these are the few tips that I've garnered that could help you in, in doing the, the amazing job that you're already doing. So I would say first, prepare as much as you can. Read about the person that you're interviewing. Read about the type of work that they do so that you can then write all the questions that you want to do and so have a plan but then once you get to the interview follow the plan but be flexible listen a lot to what your interviewee is saying so that then you can ask follow-up questions and enjoy it above all try to have fun it's great that you're able to talk to interesting people that you get to learn from them and so Having fun is an, a key part of every, every interview. Good luck. Thank you, Francisco, uh, Ari, and Anya, and Kenza for the great discussion and for all the things that we learned today. Thank you, Ubuntu's, for listening to this interview slash training. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can hear about upcoming sessions with other change makers. Please. Also tell your friends about Aboot and share social media links with them. And last but not least, go to aboot.co to learn about opportunities to collect digital badges and help us plant trees.